Hello everyone and welcome. So we've been taking a look at what how we can use Excel as a means to make uh, in engineering to help us basically as a tool to help us find out the answer to certain questions and to solve certain problems. And in this example, we're going to take a scenario where we've, we're checking in Ohm's law. So imagine you're Mr. Ohm and you've come up with his law. What would you do? You'd go into the lab, you'd get a resistor and you would take various measurements of the uh, V is for volts, I is for current, and you would, according to Ohm's law, uh, the, volts, uh, the current changes as the volts change across a set resistor, a set value. So what we're going to do is we're going to test that. And if, if by doing enough experimentation, and you've got to do experimentation for the theory to become a law, so if we do enough experimentation, do enough measurements in, in labs with different value resistors in different circumstances, uh, different voltage ranges, we can test this theory and see if it's correct and then, then it can become a law. So what I've done is I've put a resistor into a, a, with a voltage supply and measured how the current changes as the voltage changes. And we're going to see if this obeys Ohm's law and if it obeys Ohm's law then it can become a law. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to plot a graph with these values. So insert, and I'm going to use the clutter one without a line on. In this case, I usually have the line on, but not this one. And then if I go to my graph, let's just move it over a little bit and make it a bit bigger. It's easier to see. Okay, if I go to my graph and right click on it, I can now add uh, why is it not appeared try that again add trend line this is what we're looking for yeah I needed to right click and select on one of the on one of the dots basically so add trend line and I get this box pops up you can already see there's a dotted line in there and what that represents is that represents your y equals mc plus uh, mx plus c formula is standard formula uh, and it's a linear one so if you had values where you thought the it would be better exp um, with an exponential curve or a logarithmic curve then you would select one of these it goes on best guess and the best guess obviously for this was linear so it does look fairly linear does that so we've got that selected now what this has done is this has used uh, a calculation method to find the line of best fit. So you remember when you were at school you would have put all your lines, you were doing physics and you put all your dots on from your experiment and then you put your line of best fit on. And if the whole class had all the same values you'd all probably end up with a different line. Because it's open to interpretation, human interpretation and we'd all come up with a different answer probably. So this is the line of best fit but it's been done mathematically. So if you did it this, do this experiment over and over again, or this measure this system, you would get the same answer. So this uses a calculation, uh, finding the the, uh, the difference of the squares, I think it's called, from memory. Um, it's a long process, quite tedious, and very easy to go wrong. So this is where Excel's fantastic, because you can see how quickly I've done that. I've done my measurements, and I've plotted it into a table, put it into a table, and plotted it onto a graph. Nice and easy, so linear. Now this is where it gets clever. If I select this, display equation on chart, we see our standard y equals mx plus c formula. So what have we got? We've got the m is the gradient, if you remember. So the gradient gives us the gradient there, which is basically a calculation that rides over the run. If you're doing this on paper with a graph, again, a whole class would get different results. So in this case, we've got a precise result. This is your C intercept where it crosses the Y intercept. So you can see that this is minus 0 0.006. Okay, so basically it's practically zero, which is what Ohm's law says it should be. If there's no current, no voltage across a resistor, there should be no current flowing. Now, obviously, it's not bang on zero because you get these discrepancies in your results. So it's going to skew it slightly. So the calculation is going to take into account this result here that's a bit off and this one and this one. So you, obviously you're not going to get it back on zero. It's pretty close though. And this is the gradient. 
So there we have our standard formula. And from that formula, that means that we can uh, extrapolate any value. So if I want to know well, it would be at 30 volts or 35 volts or 100 volts or 200 volts. It would give me that value by just inserting it into my formula. So immediately we can see it's useful and we can see, already see it's down to obey Ohm's law. Okay, another thing we can do, we'll accept all that as it is at the minute. Let me just close that. Is we can check to see if this data is good correlation. I mean, we've already got a clue here with the line, to be honest. Now, uh, if these figures were a bit more scattered, we could start to ask the question, is this data very safe? Is it a good correlation? So good correlation means that all the values line up well. We've got all our ducks in a line, you could say. Now, there's a few methods for doing this, and one of them is Pearson's, Pearson's formula. And let me show you it first and then I'll explain what it means. So Pearson's is a method where you take all your values, you do some calculating um, using, the, using this formula. You can Google it and find it and see, see it's quite long winded to be honest. And this is again where Excel comes into its own. So we take Excel. So again, we're doing a formula, we're inserting a formula. So let's give it a title, Pearson's I'll do Pe yeah, let's call it Pearson's correlation. I'll just leave it at Pearson's for length. And then the formula. So it equals, and then the formula is stri fairly straightforward. Pearson's, it's Pearson actually. Pearson, and it does give you a clue here. Open brackets, and then it'll tell you a rare one, a rare two. What does that mean? Well, this is a rare one, and this is a rare two. So I select all this data. And you'll see it's it's put that in from B20 to B39. So that's B20 there down to B39 with a colon in the middle. Then you'll see, if you look at the formula, you might not be able to see it on the video, but there's a comma there, comma, and then it's time for a rear two. So now select this data. And then close it off, close the bracket off, or just to hit enter. And there we are, that's Pearson's correlation. So what have we got? We've got 0 0.99943. Now that is exceptionally good. What that means is that this data is showing good correlation. What you're looking for is values. The nearer it is to one, the nearer it is to perfect. Now, if this gradient had been going this way, I would actually have a minus one or minus 0.99943 because it's going up in a positive direction, it's a positive. Uh, if it's negative, that's not wrong. It depends, it, you know, if that's the same thing applies. If it's near to minus one, then it's good correlation. Anything above is, and it's a generally what uh, matter of opinion, of course. Uh, if it's a better than 0.8, certainly better than 0.9 or minus, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, then it's showing good, we would say it's showing good correlation. If you got zero, then it'd be totally no, no correlation whatsoever. Uh, so the nearer you get to zero, the worse it is. So this is not only good, it's exceptional. This is exceptionally good. So that's showing good correlation. So that's a good figure. So let's just block that off with a solid line around it. Okay. So if you were doing this for an assignment, you would have to describe everything you've done and put the formulas in, so that all the steps you've done. So what I would do there is insert a text box, like thus. Write your comments about what you've done, what formulas you've done. Maybe answer any other questions that may be on the assignment, like what does this first value tell you? What does, why is this not zero, for example? and so on, and that would answer those questions well. And it, that would be a sensible way to do it, and it's got it nice and neat, and you could uh, save this and then send this to your tutor. Okay, let's just get rid of that uh, box, because I don't really particularly want it. I just want to look at one other thing. So, uh, two other things actually. Let's just go back to our, see if I can get this box back, yep. There was another thing, I set display equation on chart. There's another one called display R squared values on chart. If I tick that box, you'll see 
let's just get rid of this now now I've got an R squared value which is 9989 so this is the same process of this here but not quite it's not the same method there's a few methods um, and if you want to argue about which one's best then go it go ahead <laughs> and spend the rest of your life doing that but this is a different method so basically I didn't need to do that I could have just done this uh, to, and again good correlation same principle applies the nearer to one or minus one the better it is and obviously this is good as well so that's one thing we you can do another th uh, thing here is what does this value 0 0.0179 tell us well it's the gradient okay we know that because it's y equals mx plus c formula so it's the gradient what would the gradient be telling us in this situation of Ohm's law well, the Ohm's law would uh, says that i equals v divided by r but if you rearrange it r would be equal to v divided by by uh, i now and that that gradient would give us the resistance there's one issue though uh, if you if you're careful you might spot it this actually is upside down it's inverted because it should be uh, r equals um, r, r equals uh, v divided by i but we've actually got r equals i divided by v because this is the x-axis the volts here okay so it should be y divided by x or the change in that distance as you do your you know rise over run or uh, rate of change uh, so it's upside down so what we'd have to do is invert that answer so 0 0.0179 for example needs inverting or that's one divided by it in other words uh, so 0 0.0179 uh, inverted so the x minus one key on my calculator gives me an answer of 55.8659 so that means that this resistor had a, an ohmic value of 55.87 okay let's write that in here uh, 855.87 ohms so that's the value of the resistor for this experiment now I happen to know because I, I, uh, I did these figures myself and the, the value I used was 56 ohms which is one of the uh, set values for resistors so obviously there's some intolerance in this resistor um, resistors do have torrents and this one has got some tor torrents so it's not bang on 56 it's not a high position resistor if you did this experiment you would want to use a high position resistor if they were available they wouldn't have been available in in ohms days they were carbon film the carbon uh, resistors and they weren't that good they weren't as good as this but that's so that's what that gradient tells you there but it's the inverse of the answer so it's the gradient so it tells you the resistor so as you can see pretty useful pretty useful experiments okay thank you for listening